Hi, and welcome to this week's episode of Pixel Peak. This also happens to be the last news, news episode of the season. Next week, we'll be closing out the season with a special episode with some even more special guests. <laughs> that sounds very exciting. This week, however, we start off with the return of Overwatch's annual archives event. I remember doing that last year. It was really fun. Yeah, I still use one of the skins I got from the last one. Next, we have Intel working on an anti-hate speech tool for their systems. It's about time. Next, we move on to some PlayStation news as we have a couple of things to cover. The final story for this week and the season brings us to Twitch with an expansion to their content guidelines. Hopefully this expansion helps to clean up the undesirable aspects that sometimes arise on the platform. Oh, absolutely. This week's game review is going to be on the game Outriders by game reviewer Elizabeth Dodson. And finally, our analysis segment brings us back to Ruby Hall covering some things that happened with Nintendo, including a new Animal Crossing Build-A-Bear. We thank you for joining us, and we hope you guys enjoy this week's episode. I'm Kristen Lawrence. And I'm Bryce Gates, and we hope you enjoy your stay on, on Pixel, Pixel Peak. Peak. Kicking off the news this week, we have Overwatch's fan favorite annual archives event returning, which gives players a chance to replay the game's co-op missions, earning them new elite skins. Previously, Overwatch had a reward system that required players to win nine games in order to get new skins. A new structure instead rewards players with stars for playing missions. The harder the mission, the more stars to be earned. This new reward system encourages players to tackle the game's harder PvE missions in order to earn more stars, but also still rewards players for playing easier missions. On top of this, you do not have to fully complete the missions to earn stars. Just try your best. In terms of those skins I mentioned, there will be five new legendary skins for Genji, Soldier 76, Tracer, Widowmaker, and Zarya. All five of these skins can be earned from loot boxes, purchasing with in-game currency, and of course, unlocking them through archives. Other skins also include three new epic skins for Lucio, Zenyatta, and Mercy. Unlike the five legendary skins, the epic skins can be earned by participating in weekly challenges. As for the Archives event, it has been going on since April 6th and will be running until April 27th. For a more detailed look at these new skins, be sure to check out Overwatch's official website for a gallery. One unfortunate theme of video games across decades, platforms, and even series is the presence of hate speech. Whether it is the result of competitive players or otherwise, this has caused a reported 22% of gamers to drop particular games as a result. Intel's new software Bleep was created to censor hate speech in video games in real time. The program was developed in partnership with Spirit AI and is just now in its beta phase after its first prototype was created in 2019. Bleep was showcased in a recent Intel presentation by their very own Vice President Roger Chandler, who explains that the problem of a hate speech well and hands the debut of Bleep off to Intel's marketing engineer Greg Raymond. One detailed feature of the program even allows its users to customize it by using it to break down hate speech into different categories such as xenophobia and racism, misogyny, LGBTQT plus hate, and more. Each category also has a slider for how much the censor, which goes between none, some, most, or all. Although the exact criteria for each of these options is stated as being complicated, we can expect more clarification as the program reaches its final stage. We haven't exactly seen how the program will work in action, but we can expect it to be a useful tool for many gamers across the globe and especially younger audiences. For some exciting PlayStation news, we will be taking a look at a few different things Sony is working on. First up, Bloomberg reports that the studio Bend, who developed the 2019 title Days Gone, has pitched an idea for a sequel to this game only to be denied by Sony. The reason for this denial is mainly because, as you may or may not know, Days Gone did not do so well among the critics. 
The other reason is because Sony has reportedly sent some of the team at Bend to work on a multiplayer game with Naughty Dog, with the remainder being sent to work on a game under the Uncharted franchise. Naughty Dog has stated in the past that they themselves would not create another Uncharted game, but with the Sony Bend studio coming into the picture, it seems as though they could be the new creators. Speaking on Naughty Dog, they have previously stated that they are working on a standalone Last of Us multiplayer game. They also claim they are toying with the idea of creating a third Last of Us and also are in the process of remaking the original one again, this time for the PlayStation 5. Lastly, we all know Microsoft has had major success with their Xbox Game Pass, and many fans have been wondering if Sony will do something similar. Although it was previously stated that the Game Pass model would quote, be unsustainable for PlayStation Studios by Jim Ryan of Sony Interactive Entertainment, many sources claim, however, that Sony may have an ace up their sleeve. In recent interviews, Jim Ryan has stated that Sony has a quote, counterpunch for Xbox's Game Pass, stating that news will be coming soon. With all things still left unconfirmed, we will be following the story just as closely as you all. For more information on any and everything Sony, be sure to check out their public press releases on their official website. Intel isn't the only company trying to make the internet a better place. The streaming platform Twitch has expanded its set of guidelines relating to hateful conduct and harassment to take also into account what happens off their platform. These guidelines have been separated into two categories. The first covers harassment of a Twitch community member, which persists on other platforms, while the second category is set to involve serious offenses that pose a substantial safety risk to the Twitch community. But what exactly falls into these categories? Some of the examples include threats of mass violence or violent acts belonging to a hate group and the sexual exploitation of children. Twitch has already stated that their full list is not completely comprehensive, but they have included the most outrageous acts that result in physical and psychological harm. Twitch has also stated that they are able to investigate matters that occur solely on third-party platforms at this time. Instead, these investigations into conduct outside of Twitch will only occur in adjacent to the incidents that occur within the service. The, be the better ensure their guidelines are being met, Twitch has brought on a third-party investigative partner in an unnamed law firm. They do assure that the community, however, that they are an experienced investigative law firm. And with them, users now have an, a dedicated email address to submit reports of misconduct occurring off platform. Let us know what you guys think about this and our other stories down in the comments. Outriders is the newest game to be released as of making this review and is a third person shooter game that can be played either single player and also co-op with friends and or strangers. The game was developed by People Can Fly and was published by Square Enix on April 1st of 2021. It combines brutal and bloody combat with role playing systems and this, this does include a massive skill tree. That personally reminds me of games like Skyrim that also have massive skill trees, along with many different gear modifications. It has been made for the PS4 and 5, the Xbox One, Series X and S, and PC. Now, this game still has its kinks to be knocked out, with its multiplayer being a bit finicky. Uh, for instance, I joined a party even though I didn't want to. I wanted to play as solo as I could, um, and it was unclear how I joined said party in the first place. <laughs> the basic plot for the game is that Earth has been destroyed, so humanity has resorted to traveling to space to the planet of Enoch as a last approach of survival. However, as a small group embarks on a journey to investigate signals coming from the planet from their probes, they find that the planet is extremely hostile. 
After barely surviving a crazy storm, your character is then put into cryosleep, where you are woken up 31 years later to a very different world than the one you fell asleep in. Let's move up. The combat feature for the game is simple to understand, and like most games, it gives you a tutorial on the, at the beginning of what is what. However, later on, as you get into the first portion of actual action shooting, it does give you a few of the controls, like your special abilities, abilities for your character, and I found myself learning the controls for my character's abilities after the fact because I was so focused on surviving the current part of the map I was in. Speaking of combat and defeating enemies, until I realized that the 1, 2, and 3 keys were for your character's special abilities, I found myself just spraying my enemies with my gun and that took care of them. And if it didn't, I would not so graceful at times retreat and then try again. The movement in the game is also pretty smooth. Oh. You use the WASD I, I, keys. I and tra the transitions between going backward, forward, and side to side were smooth to the eye as well. The music for the game, in my opinion, is great, with the battle music being upbeat and easy to get it into, and adds to the suspense of battle, making me want to continue playing for hours. The graphics for this game are amazing, and I would personally suggest, whether it be on console or PC, that you set it to ultra settings if your system can do so. I personally had to set it to high slash medium uh, to do the game review, for my system can't multitask to save its life. Okay, you wanna play? Um, but play. with but even on those settings, this game still looked pretty great. Captain, I got attacked by one of those cow things. As for an overall rating, I would give this game a top of mountain, because unlike most games that are coming out these days, that are either overly shootery, I'm not sure that's a word, but we're going with it, or overly roleplay, this game has a good mix of both that is evenly balanced, and the roleplay uh, being interesting enough to get over the fact that for someone like me who would normally play just roleplay type games, I uh, would be interested in playing this game. Tanner? Tanner! I'm seeing some really strange sh** here. What the f***? Hi, Ruby. Thank you for joining us to talk a little bit about Nintendo. Thanks for having me back. You know I love talking about this. Oh, absolutely. Now let's start with talking about Animal Crossing New Horizons. Each month, new updates are made to the game. What can you tell us about what was added in this month? So they added in a couple more things. Um, first thing is that they brought back the cherry blossoms. It's a resource that you use to craft some DIY stuff. So those associated DIYs are back. You can collect them and also collect cherry blossoms. So you can make you can make that furniture you may have missed out on last year. Um, they also added in some new furniture though. This time they kind of went for like a prom theme. So they added in some prom theme furniture as well as some new clothes. So you can customize your island and your character with that. And they also added in a new nook point system. Oh, that's cool. Um, could you elaborate on what the addition of nook points are and just in general, what they are? So Nook Points are a tie-in with the Nintendo Online app on the smartphone. Um, basically what you do is that you log into the app once a day and you can collect points and you can use them for new exclusive in-game items. So there's a lot, there's a lot more to add in, just a new way to get it. I think it's a pretty interesting tie-in. 
I'm sure it keeps people coming back every day as well. <laughs> um, in other Animal Crossing news, Build-A-Bear launched a new collab featuring themed plushies. What have fans thought of this? So fans are actually really, really excited about these. These plushies are just really cute and fans cannot wait to get their hands on them. The, the only thing that I and other fans like to see a bit more is more characters added into the crossover. But I think what they have is a solid start. Hopefully they expand upon this. Yeah, that'd be cool to see what they do in the future. Mm -hmm. um, now to switch up the conversation. Has Nintendo announced any new titles worthy of being mentioned? I've heard some things about Pac-Man and maybe a remake of Destroy All Humans. So, um, speaking of Pac-Man, they just released a game called Pac-Man 99. It's a Battle Royale-like version of Pac-Man. Um, it's very similar to their previous titles, Tetris 99 and Super Mario 99, where you're essentially playing, you're playing classic arcade Pac-Man, but you're also playing it against 99 other people. So they added in some new twists and turns to give a new take on the original Pac-Man game. There is also a Destroy All Humans remake coming to Switch. That's a pretty cult classic game from a couple years ago. And it's really nice to see things come on Switch. Um, there's also a bunch of new indie games coming. Uh, first things first being Oxenfree 2. Oxenfree was a very popular horror game that came on the Switch and there's gonna be a sequel coming on Switch. So that's really exciting. And there's also Fez coming on Switch. That is like the classic indie game when people think of indie games. And for some reason it hasn't been on Switch and now it's gonna be on Switch. So that's always nice to see. Those are definitely some great game updates. Um, now to talk about Mario. Super Mario Brothers pros are all about the speed runs and I hear a record has recently been broken. What can you tell me about that? So the previous world record for the original Mario Bros game got broken kind of recently, which is huge because previously no one thought that a human could do any time below four minutes, 55 seconds. Well, that's exactly what this person did. Um, they employed the use of this flagpole glitch that cut down on a bit of time and they beat the game in record time. And it's just, it's a really good watch. I highly recommend going to watch that speed run. That's honestly really impressive. <laughs> um, but for E3, one of the biggest events in the video game industry, it's set to be all virtual and is coming up on June 15th. What do you hope to hear from Nintendo at this event? So Nintendo actually has a lot to potentially talk about during this presentation. They have a lot of big upcoming titles they have on the back burner. Like you got your Metroid Prime 4 maybe, Bayonetta 3 and Breath of the Wild 2 that everyone is looking forward to these sequels. Um, there's also the heavily rumored Switch Pro. People have been talking about it since the Switch came out and maybe Nintendo will finally do something with it. That would be interesting to see as well because you know, the Switch isn't exactly the strongest system. So if they put out a stronger Switch, that would be really well received by some people. Those would definitely all be great announcements. <laughs> Um, thanks again for lending your time to talk about all the new updates that Nintendo has to offer. No problem. Love to be here. Now let's head back to Kristen and Bryce. As always, thanks for the great work this week, everyone. Yeah, guys, we really appreciate it. And we can't look forward to seeing you next week on our special episode. We had a lot of good news stories this week, didn't we? We sure did. I'm really glad that things are finally being done to stop the spread of hate and harassment online. I can't agree with you more. I'm very excited to see these tools finished and see how things change, hopefully for the better. Oh, absolutely. But what about the games? Did anything catch your eye? Yeah, I'm excited for the Overwatch event, and I'm curious to see if this rumor about a third Last of Us game is true, and if so, how it will turn out. Oh, totally. I'd definitely be interested in seeing where the story goes from here, and the overall fan reaction to it based off the last game. Of course. Like every week, we have new Pixel Peak episodes coming out every Monday afternoon at noon. You can find them on WatchAppTV.com, Skybest Channels 20 and 1020, Spectrum Channel 198, and on App State's Campus Television Channel 23.3. 
And as always, guys, you can get reminded for the upcoming episodes by following our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts at PixelPeakAppTV. Of course, we have our incredible crew to thank for another great episode. Thanks to writers Rebecca Larson, Josh Beal, and Zach White, game reviewer Elizabeth Dodson, Nintendo analyst Ruby Hall, and producers Nick Corbin, Elise Taylor, Haley Cypher, and Jacob Barber for another week of impeccable gaming industry content. Thank you all for watching, and we hope you enjoyed your stay on, on Pixel, Pixel Peak. Peak.